Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group YouTube channel. I'm Ian, G0VGS. In part one, we looked at the hardware required to set up your own hotspot. We then downloaded the software from pystar.uk and installed it onto an SD card. In today's video, we're going to complete the process. We finished part one by installing the operating system onto the SD card. But there's one more step that we need to go through in order to be able to configure PyStar. And that is to get it onto our local network. If you remember, the Pi Zero in particular doesn't have a wired ethernet port as standard, so it needs to use Wi-Fi. But how can we get the details onto that card of our Wi-Fi before we actually plug it in to the Raspberry Pi and power it up. Well, the nice guys at PyStar have thought about that. If you open a browser and go to pystar.uk, on the left-hand side here, you'll see an option called PyStar Tools. Click on that and you'll be presented with this form. Choose your Wi-Fi country code, in my case that's GB, and pop in your SSID and password. Now, obviously, these aren't my details at home, Put your own details in then if you're not sure what they are have a look on the back of your router they're normally uh, presented there in a little box somewhere when you finish that submit the query and you'll see that you've downloaded a little file so let's open the file browser and you can see here we've downloaded a file called wpa underscore supplicant.conf snappy name on the left hand side here, if you've got your uh, SD card plugged into your computer, you'll see a file called boot. And all we need to do now is drag that file onto boot and release. And once we've done that, if we look at boot, you'll see right at the bottom, there's a file called wpasupplicant.conf. This magically allows PyStar to boot up and connect to the Wi-Fi immediately at start. So just before we attempt to configure PyStar, one of the things you're going to need for full compatibility is a DMR ID. I know that sounds odd when you're going to work with YSF, but trust me, having a DMR ID just makes things work in the way you expect. So if you've got a DMR ID, have that handy. If not, you need to go to radioid.net and then click up here where it says login, sign up, and then over to the left, click on sign up read through the information here, agree to all the above and register your account and you will get a DMR ID. You will need to upload a PDF of your license. So having made all our preparations, we can take the card out of the PC, insert it into the Raspberry Pi and power on the Raspberry Pi. It may take a little while for the Raspberry Pi to boot up, so go and make a nice cup of tea or something and then come back to it. And once you're ready, type in http colon slash slash pi hyphen star dot local and hit return. And that will bring you to this page. Now at the moment there's no modes defined or anything and we need to actually configure it. So after a while it will give you a login box. And the login is pi hyphen star and the password is raspberry. That will now log us in and you will see this page. Now the first thing we need to do before we do anything at all is do an update. And you'll find that up here at the top. So just click update and allow the updates to take place. This may take a little while depending on just how much needs to be updated. When the updates are complete, it will say finished at the bottom and we can go back to our configuration screen. Right at the very top now you can see an alert to say that a new version has been released and we can upgrade to it. We're not going to bother at the moment but you can just click on that and the update will be automatic. 
So we still don't have any modes that we can use. The first thing we need to do is put our call sign in. There are two frequencies in the UK that are generally used for hotspots. One is 434 MHz, the other is 438.8 MHz. This is set at 438.8 MHz, so we'll leave it there. Enter your latitude and longitude, put in your town and your country, and click Apply Changes. Again, this will take a while while the Raspberry Pi restarts. As the Raspberry Pi restarts, you'll notice that you get this little warning come up and it tells you that the modem selection has been updated and you have to reselect your modem from the list. We're not worried about that for the moment, so I'm just going to click OK. And you'll notice now that we have a whole mode section here. Now, before we continue, what I'm going to do is select both DMR and YSF. I know we're not dealing with DMR, but we need to enter our DMR ID. And if we don't select DMR, we may not be given the option to do that. So for the moment, we're going to select DMR and YSF. And then we're going to apply the changes again. Once the Raspberry Pi has restarted, we're going to make a few changes. And the first thing I'm going to do is add my actual DMR ID. So that's the DMR ID for G0 VGS, which is 235 1433. We're now going to make a few more changes. And the first thing we're going to do is change the relevant modem type. So let's have a look at that radio modem type. You can see on the left here, drop it down. Then you want to choose STM32 DVM MM DVM HS Raspberry Pi Hat GPIO. So we'll select that. We can now untick DMR. We don't need that anymore. And the very last thing we need to do is change the startup host. So we come down to Yesu System Fusion Configuration, you'll see here YSF startup host. And at the moment it's on America Link YSX. So what we can do is just drop that down and you'll see you get a search right at the top. So let's connect to Northwest Fusion Group. So if I just start typing NW, you can see right at the top there, We've got GB and WFG. So let's select that. And now we're going to apply changes for the last time. When the Raspberry Pi restarts, go to the top and click Admin. And once that page comes up, you'll see that on the left here, we're showing YSF. We're showing YSF Net, both in green. And at the bottom, you can see the network we're connected to is Northwest Fusion Group. Nothing's happening at the moment, we're receiving nothing. So I've set my uh, Yesu FTM400 to 438800 in DN mode. So we'll just key up and put a test call out. G0 VGS, Golf Zero Victor Golf Sierra, test only, no response required. And you can see there that we put some transmission through the hotspot into our network here, Northwest Fusion Group. And if you look here, you can see there's local RF activity. So that's who is coming in via the aerial on the hotspot. And then up above is the actual network activity, the information coming in from the gateway. And over the right hand side, you've got RF duration 5.8 seconds, zero loss, and a BER, that's a bit error rate, of 0.2%, which is absolutely fine. We're now up and running on our hotspot. Just a couple of little caveats. The call sign on the radio must be exactly the same as the call sign you have set in PiStar. If it isn't, then you may have trouble. What you can do is go to the configuration and set the node type to public. Try it then and see if it works. But generally, if the call sign in the radio is the same as the call sign and the DMR ID in the configuration of PiStar, everything should be up and running. 
Well, I hope you found that useful. By now, hopefully, you should have a working hotspot on YSF. Let me know in the comments if you found it useful and if you've been able to set up your hotspot successfully. An amazing thank you this week um, for all the new subscribers. I'm completely and utterly dumbfounded by the amount of people who've subscribed since the last video. So thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It doesn't cost anything and it really helps the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you click the bell, you'll get notified every time I release a new video. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio.